tennis is not all about textbook hitting. Uh, when you check out these players, the top players like Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, or any, any top player you, you like, um, yeah, they hit some great forehands and backhands, uh, great form, legendary form. But also when they hit these shots that they are seemingly off balance, they're pulled off wide, they get into these defensive situations or very awkward situations, they have some great improvisational skills as well. And these skills are almost unteachable. Um, they just happen because they're in this situation and they just need to pull out some really good shot that you may have never seen before. And you may need these improvisational skills in your own matches. They could be the difference between winning and losing. And so when I see good improvisational skills, um, I see that these type of players have uh, quick hands. They have quick hands, quick feet, and of course, a quick mind. So let's let's check out this point here. Daniel is the one about to hit this backhand. I'm at the far end, and this is midpoint. And so already this is a odd situation because Daniel here hits this cross court backhand, and it's it's coming in. It's a very um. Very good angle here, sharp angle, and Daniel chooses to do an approach all the way from the corner, and this is not recommended. I don't recommend this, you know, you're coming from the baseline here to the corner all the way here, cross court. That's a tough approach, but um, it worked out well for Daniel here, so he's approaching, and already he knows it's a good shot. He may have anticipated that um, I'm gonna do this slice here, and so, and I, I'm check, you know, I see this off my periphery, and I may have just gotten super surprised that he's doing this corner approach. So when I hit this, barely got this ball and hit this floater of a backhand, uh, Daniel is opting to do this volley. He's gonna try to do a volley here, and you know his racket head is a little bit up, and that's what you're supposed to do, right? Um, when you see this ball floating, you're coming up to the net. You want to do what I call an intercept volley. Intercept volley or running volley or a closing in volley. But he's not going to get there quite quite there. He's not going to be able to get a volley in because he's going to be late. And so as he tries to try to pull up here, okay, notice that he, he stops his momentum. So very good footwork here. So, you know, you have to find a way to decelerate and he just stops right in time. And so he also has very good hands. So as you can see, you know, he has this ball up here, slightly jammed. He got his hands, still his two hands on his racket, and he decides to go for this push, two-handed drop shot to the open space. So excellent hands, excellent feet, and an excellent mind uh, with Daniel here going for that two-handed push drop shot. Here's another point where uh, it's just my family here. Here's my dad, my brother. That's me on the far end. And we're playing Australian doubles, which is pretty much uh, just two on one. Um, I don't know why they call it Australian doubles, but it's just two on one here. And my dad serves here, and I hit this. Uh, powerful return and so my dad hits this ball and it kind of pops up okay it pops up and this was really weird because when it bounced here um, it, it was a funny bounce it was a weird bounce and so I'm I was ready to hit this two-handed backhand drive okay and you know as it goes up here right I th I over I either overran this ball or the ball just kind of shot up with this weird bounce and I think it might may have been a little bit of both because this is not a shot that I've ever hit before and probably will never hit again so uh when I got to this ball here notice that I'm actually above ground here I'm actually jumping up for this shot here and this is what I call a two-handed backhand smash so I still had my two hands on the racket here it obviously popped up and it was above my head and so I got a little startled here 
And what I did was this two-handed backhand smash down. And so it worked. You know, I got, I split split them both here. And I couldn't, there was, there's probably nothing else I could have done in that situation because that ball just kind of jumped up at me. And I normally don't overrun balls. I just had to use an improvisational skill, again, with my hands, mostly my hands there, because I needed to be very quick with my hands. If not, then I wouldn't be able to get that ball because I was running, and this is the only option that I had at that moment in time, and I went with a two-handed backhand smash. Here's a more common one, and this is just to illustrate that you need some improvisational skills off on when you're on defense here. So as I serve here, uh, Scott here, the returner, is about to crush this serve back at me. And this was a very, very powerful uh, return. And in tennis, you're going to need some emergency swings. Swings where, you know, again, it's unteachable, not taught. Maybe you could try to run a drill where you're on defense, but you're going to have to find a way to get this ball back. And I had to stretch out for this ball. I, usually when I'm on defensive, on defense, on the forehand side, I go with a chop forehand or a slice. But at this moment in time, I, I still went with that forehand grip that I still have my full Western grip here. I had no time to change my grip to a slice forehand here. So, you know, this is what I came up with, a full stretch forehand flick. And I am really stretched out here. This is probably the most I could do on the full stretch. And if you see, uh, you know, top players like Novak Djokovic, they are super stretched out sometimes as if they're like uh, made out of uh, a rubber band. They're pretty much a rubber band. And they could stretch out and do these emergency swings like no other. But here's my emergency swing. And I just barely was able to get this top spin flick just on the hands this was all hands right here um and my body just the flexibility of my body i'm not that flexible but i really had to reach out for that and i think it's really just my desire to just get the ball back and i got it back and i made scott hit another shot so sometimes you just got to get your opponent to hit one more shot and maybe you'll win that point so don't discount improvisational skills in tennis. Yes, you're going to need some textbook looking forehands and backhands and serves. But many times in tennis, you're going to be in some awkward situations. And there may be a shot where you need to be ready at the very last moment to make that adjustment. So keep your hands quick, keep your feet quick, and keep your mind quick and your improvisational skills could be the difference maker in your game. If you enjoyed this video, kindly do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.